Hi, good evening, everybody. Can you all hear me? <laughs> Welcome to the 2021 McKinley Foundation so Social Justice Awards Gala. It's so wonderful to see all of your faces. It's been a long time since we gathered this way, or rather, I don't think we've ever, ever gathered this way. Um, but it's definitely more comfortable, right? No high-heeled shoes, jackets and ties, worry about parking on campus. Did you order the chicken or the salmon? Still, I'm so excited to have you all here tonight to help us honor and celebrate this year's award recipients. Before we get started, I wanna help orient you to this virtual surrounding. I know many of you are old hats at this Zoom thing, but I also know that for some of you, this is still unfamiliar territory. And I'm talking to my mom and dad right now. First, I wanna point out that I've placed you all on mute. Um, if for some reason you inadvertently unmute yourself, we'll mute you. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the celebration without worrying about your phones ringing or your dogs barking or any of those other things we've gotten used to. Towards the end of the program, I will ask you all to unmute yourselves. A message will pop up and you simply have to click on it. Um, throughout the program, I encourage you to use the chat room. We will periodically post information and links there. So you might wanna open it now so you can read them as they appear. So that's at the bottom of your screen. There should be something that says chat and just click on that and it should open up to the side. Um, you can also play with your view settings, whether you prefer gallery view or speaker view, if you know what that means. It really doesn't matter for our purposes tonight, just do whatever is your preference. So can you believe it's been two years since the last time we did this? We commemorated our 10th Social Justice Awards Gala in March of 2019. And we were all set to celebrate with a Roaring Twenties theme and to mark the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote last April. And then COVID happened. If you're like me, I spent much of the year working from home with very limited society verging on solitude. We watched as the world changed around us in a variety of ways. An unprecedented, aren't you tired of that word unprecedented? An unprecedented global pandemic highlighted the inequities of American society. Simultaneously, systemic prejudice against Black Americans made these disparities uncomfortably stark. As a result, the McKinley Presbyterian Church and Foundation sought to reaffirm our commitment to righting these systemic wrongs in our own communities. A Black Lives Matter statement was developed that reflects this commitment and outlines strategies to hold ourselves to the highest standard possible. A link to this document is in the chat. I invite you to read it, download it, share it, tweet it, adapt it for however it might help you and your workplace or your community. But this statement will be a living document. It will change the circumstances required. For us, it is just the beginning. But now let's not talk about McKinley Foundation anymore. Let's talk about those in our community who during this time of strife got fired up by the events and got into some good trouble. They are an example and an inspiration to us all. At this time, I invite Reverend Heidi Weatherford to welcome us further with an opening prayer followed by a land acknowledgement. Please join me in the invocation prayer. God who labored creation into being, we give thanks for this day and the opportunity to work in your world. Grant us the strength to labor for what is right, just, and fair. Grant us the wisdom to speak out for those who are enslaved, oppressed, and exploited. Grant us the ability and the courage to break the chains of injustice and hear the voices of people long silenced. As we seek to work in your world this day, help us make it a better place for all of your children. Amen. It is my pleasure now to introduce to you Mark McConney, who is the manager of Presby Hall. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked on this land, 
in their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. We recognize and acknowledge that we are on the lands of the Peoria, Kaskaskia, Niankasha, Wea, Miami, Nascudin, Odawa, Stock, Niskaki, Kickapoo, Potawatomi, Ajiwe, and Chickasaw nations, past, present, emerging. We are grateful for their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. These lands continue to carry the stories of these nations and their struggles for survival and identity. Good evening. I'm Kathy Spiegel, and I've been involved with this event for the past 12 years. And it's with great pride that we once again are able to recognize members of our community for their efforts in creating a better place to live. A big thank you to all of the donors and sponsors who are making tonight so special. This would not be happening without your support. Go to the chat to see the current list of donors. Now, take a look at this basket of goodies collected from Black and women-owned businesses. Two baskets are being raffled off tonight. Haven't bought your tickets yet? The site for purchasing tickets is in the chat and you can still get in on the, on the raffle. The items come from Fire Doll Studio, Dandelion, Nothing Bunt Cakes, Stango Zambian Cuisine, Wooden Hog Barbecue, Above and Beyond Detailing, CBPB Popcorn, Tea Farm Delight Flower Farm, and the Neal Street Blues. And the baskets each are worth about $150. Now I invite you to get to know about our first two award categories, the Student Organization Award and the Community Organization Award. Good evening, I'm Jane Kane. I work with the McKinley Development Committee and help plan this event this evening. I'm here with Andrea Miller, who's the coordinator of the Garden Hills Food Pantry that McKinley sponsors. We're pleased to be presenting the Social Justice Student Organization Award this evening. And we're presenting that to the Centennial High School Key Club. I'd like to invite their president and some members forward right now to receive that award. McKinley would like to thank you very much for all your work you've done for the uh, Garden Hills Food Pantry this year and present you with an award and with a $500 check that we hope you can use to benefit your club and to carry on more of your activities. I just want to thank the McKinley Foundation for this award. Um, when I first found out about the Garden Hills Food Pantry back in November, um, I never would have thought that it would be something my club and I get to do every other week. Um, and especially during uh, the pandemic, I know that a lot of families have been laid off in my community. So I'm really glad that we get to serve that every other week. And it's something that I think we will uh, definitely continue doing. The Centennial High School Key Club for more than 20 years has provided its members with opportunities to serve, to build character, to develop leadership. This year, however, the Key Club stepped up to provide much needed service to the Garden Hills Food Pantry. Garden Hills is located in North Champaign and serves an, a food desert area. And the pantry has during COVID lost a great number of its volunteers. And so when the Key Club stepped up, they were able to meet a need. Uh, many of our regular volunteers were older and with the Key Club being high school students, they were able to pitch in, come in and the clutch and save our program from having to uh, reduce significantly. Fortunately, David reached out uh, asking for after school volunteer opportunities and we were able to get them started and they've been a very significant part of the pantry. Since that time they've showed up faithfully every second and fourth Tuesday when we have our distributions and do probably 95% of the heavy lifting. So I can't say enough how much I appreciate the Key Club for their brawn, for 
their strength, for their willingness to work, for their attitude. They're a great organization and I am so very blessed and happy to have had them help and become a partner with the Garden Hills Food Pantry. In addition to their work at the food pantry this year, the Key Club has done several other things to help the community and beyond. They work with the Shoebox Project, which provides materials for returning veterans. They've cleaned up a Girl Scout camp at Muhammad, and recently finished making fleece blankets for the homeless in the community. So again, we'd like to thank them for all the hard work they've done for McKinley and beyond, and wish them well in the future as a Key Club. Thank you. I am David Oliver Holder, and I serve as the pastor of the First Presbyterian Church in Urbana, and I am a member of the McKinley Board. And it is my pleasure to present the Community Organization Award to Salt and Light. Salt and Light Ministries began in 2004 as a food and furniture pantry in Champaign. By 2014, however, its founders recognized the limit to their effectiveness. They were serving, but mostly in the sense of alleviating crisis in the short term. Study and reflection led them to a model they hoped would offer sustainable assistance to families and individuals based on people's capacities and interests. Salt and Light occupies a unique place in the constellation of groups and organizations addressing poverty, allowing people to promote their own goals, determine their own needs, and gain resources without losing dignity or any necessary government benefits. It is not uncommon for credit earning volunteers to become regular staff members. During the first round of COVID-19 aid, Salt and Light received a grant that secured the community's, the project's community impact by increasing the hourly amount of credit that four credit volunteers earn and more. The impact of this on households and individuals with limited resources cannot be overstated, nor can the impact of the mission's presence in the communities it serves. I definitely, um, on behalf of Salt and Light, just want to say thank you and what an honor it is to receive this award. Um, and, and certainly equally, if not more honoring, is that we were nominated by one of our participants, one of the people in the community who, who gets it, who, who gets us, who understands what we're about and, and really believes in it to the point that they want to support it. So for us, um, you know, really we are about how we impact our community in a way that brings everyone together and brings equity and justice and so it's, it's certainly an honor to receive this this year and, and an honor just to be considered um, with all the other amazing honorees so uh, on behalf of myself and salt light as a whole uh, i just want to thank you and, and can't possibly thank you enough The McKinley Foundation is a nonprofit public foundation, which means we rely on your donations to support our mission to engage, empower students and the surrounding community to act on issues of social justice, diversity, and sustainability. This social justice event is just one example of how we raise money and awareness. Last September, our fund development team got creative and launched our first ever Flamingo Flocking fundraiser. Participants surprised their friends and family with a lawn full of bright pink flamingos adorned with LGBTQ pride accessories. Others with flamingo allergies were able to purchase anti-flocking insurance to protect themselves and their lawns. If you should find a group of flamingos in your yard, you would be said to be hosting a flamboyance. And we've already heard reports that a flamboyance of flamingos is headed our way. Stay on the lookout for their arrival in September. Don't wanna wait until September? You may make a donation tonight. 
A link to our donation page is provided in the chat. Thank you. My name is Masumi Irie. I'm on the McKinley Board of Directors and honored to be on the committee that selected this year's Social Justice Award recipients. Um, all of us know that 2020 was kind of a horrific year. Uh, we saw the worst in people, but we also saw some amazing things happen. In the summer of 2020, I was so impressed to see our local youth organizing and just not putting up with it and making some good trouble. And I am delighted to introduce my good friend and colleague, Rita Connerly, who herself was doing all sorts of good trouble over the summer. And she will tell you more about Pain to Peace. Yeah, so Pain to Peace is a youth organization of a group of diverse girls from Champaign-Urbana who collectively came together to host one of the largest protests in Champaign, Champaign's history starting right here at Hessel Park in June uh, 2020. They started right here in this pavilion. Um, I want to say over 2,000 people protested the streets of Champaign-Urbana, um, standing up against police brutality, um, cultural inappropriation and, and appreciation, and also some of the other issues that are going on in the midst of COVID, speaking from the youth perspective. So we were able to mentor uh, some of the young girls, Naomi Dupree, Aon Harris, and Maya Well Creek, who are actually amongst um, some of the girls who are a part of that group who are here with us today. So again, just an exciting group of young females that are showing their, um, their gifts and their skills and really being a model to other teens their age. So we have three of the young ladies with us here today, and I want to start off by introduce, in, introducing them and um, honoring them with the, these awards for social, social injustice and their fights against that. And I'll start with Aeon Harris. Thank you, Aeon, for all the work that you do in our community. Thank you. Absolutely. Naomi Dupree. Naomi, thank you for the creation of Pay the Peace. <laughs> and Maya Well Malik. Thank you for all your work too, especially for that right next to Thank you to the McKinley Foundation for this Social Justice Award and recognizing all the work that we do in our community. 
Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Adani Sanchez. I'm the secretary of the McKinley Foundation Board. We're here today at Ivanhoe Estates with our Social Justice Community Individual Award winner, Lucia Maldonado. Thank you so much, Lucia, for all your hard work. Thank you. This is really, really special. Um, every time that I get recognized for the work that we do is special, but this year especially is so much more important because it's been a very, very difficult year for everybody. So. Um, I received this and knowing that I didn't do anything alone, that I have a lot of help from a lot of people. So a little bit of this goes to the two parent liaisons from Dr. Uh, Williams and the Yale School that work with me all the time, Lizzie Castillo, Maldonado, and um, Andy Marroquin. So thank you so much for this. I'm Brian Doliner and I, along with Mike Doyle, we nominated Lucia Maldonado for this year's social justice award. I've worked closely with Lucia for several years and she's been a real key community leader in really shedding a light on Latinos in our community. Um, the immigrant families who come here and work and live and build families. And over the past few years, you know, it's been increasingly difficult for this community. The last four years, the administration has really put this community in fear and Lucia has really been there to help families get by, to help them understand what's going on, to provide them basic services and need and, and really a lot of care for those families. And uh, as well in the last year since COVID, Lucia has again been out in the community and dealing with the daily kind of needs of you know, how to get laptops for children, how to get food for the families, how to help families when they lose employment. Um, so to last year with COVID, now with the vaccine and getting outreach, convincing community to take the vaccine, it's been critical to have Lucia in our community. And she's really a local treasure for us here in Urbana Champaign. So, Thank you, Lucy. There we go. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Carrie Chandler. I serve on the board of directors for the foundation. And I am also the committee chair for the Fund Development Committee, which is bringing you uh, tonight's award ceremony. So on behalf of the committee, I just want to congratulate the recipients again and thank you everyone for being here to honor the recipients. And I'm actually here to bring you the first raffle drawing. So we have two baskets tonight, as Kathy said. Um, they are all from Black or women-owned local businesses. So um, we're very happy to have these two baskets. If you have not bought your tickets yet, you can still take five minutes to go ahead and buy tickets for the second basket, but you only have five minutes. So the link is going to be in the chat where you can continue to buy some tickets, um, but we're gonna go ahead and draw a name with our handy uh, online generator uh, that Paula's got here in just a second. Okay. And it looks like our first winner is Eric Jacobson. So Yay. congratulations to Eric. Congrats, Eric. We'll be in touch about getting your basket uh, to you. So we'll contact you after the awards and we'll touch base on that. Uh, and we'll have our second drawing here in just a little bit. But again, got five minutes to purchase more tickets. Um, and next, I'm going to introduce Sandy Klitzing. She's going to take a minute to talk. She is our board president of the McKinley Foundation. We're very happy to have her here tonight. Good evening, I'm Sandy Klitzing, president of McKinley Foundation Board of Directors. On behalf of the entire board, I want to congratulate all of tonight's award winners. We are so lucky to have these remarkable people in our community. I would also like to thank the members of the Fund Development Committee for planning such a wonderful event. They are Carrie Chandler, Chair, Jane Kane, Masumi Irie, Kathy Spiegel and Asami Endo, as well as our staff members, Jennifer Wetzel and Paula Hancock. 
Finally, I want to thank all of you for joining us in support of McKinley and tonight's award winners. We couldn't do what we do without your support. If you haven't already, please consider making a donation. A link to our donation page is in the comments. Next up are two very special award presentations. On occasion, the award selection receives a nomination outlining contributions that span so many years or that have made such significant impact on our community that a standard award doesn't seem adequate. Two such awards are being presented this evening. The Champaign-Urbana Public Health District is honored with a Community Impact Award and Esther Pat is honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award. This is Kathy Spiegel. I am a member of the selection committee for this Social Justice Awards event. And I'm happy to be named to present the Community Urbana Public Health District for the Community Impact Award. It is an extremely special award that we only offer very, very seldom. Throughout its 84 years of service, CUPHD has been on the front lines of responding to health and safety threatening issues. In 1948, whooping cough, smallpox, and diphtheria cases were increasing in children. So CUPHD started offering DPT vaccinations. The polio vaccine was offered in 1955, the measles in 1964. Lead poisoning with, in children came to light in 1971, so CUPHD began offering blood tests to determine lead levels. The first positive AIDS case appeared in the county in 1984, leading to testing and counseling services that continue to this day. When two U of I students died of a meningococcal disease, PhD began offering a vaccine for students. With this history, it's no surprise that CUPHD quickly rolled out one of the most effective and efficient vaccine efforts for COVID-19 in Illinois. CUPHD used its long-standing expertise and working relationships with other community services to take on the monumental task of efficiently delivering the vaccine to the residents of Champaign County. Early on, tracers were recruited to keep track of positive cases and their contacts. Its website allowed new information to be disseminated instantly. Julie Pride, administrator of CUPHD, answered questions daily in the News Gazette and is still doing so today. And she has also appeared on local television, quickly becoming the face of COVID information in Champaign County. As soon as the vaccine became available, CUPHD rolled out an online method for signing up. And for those who were not able to access the system online, a COVID phone system allowed residents to make appointments personally. This county is extremely lucky to have such a competent staff working at CUPHD. There will no doubt be new and challenging health and safety issues to address in the future, but we can be assured that Julie Pride and her staff will be prepared to take them on. Hi, I'm Julie Pride, Administrator of Champaign-Urbana Public Health District. Um, I want to thank you all for this award. It is very meaningful to myself and to the staff. I have a long history with McKinley uh, Foundation and McK McKinley Presbyterian. Um, this has been a really rough year for everyone in, in the world, but everyone in our community and, and certainly for, for the employees here at CUPHD. So uh, to get this award and to be able to share it with everyone is, is very special and we appreciate it very much. Thank you. I'm Nancy Westcott. I'm here with Laura Keller and uh, Margie Skirvin. Uh, we are here to present Esther with the McKinley Foundation Social Justice Lifetime Achievement Award. I looked back to when we met Esther, mm -hmm. and it was September of 1978, and yep. when we convened, reconvened the NOW chapter. I'm wondering what things during the, those years and now, which would have been 78 through like 85 or so, were uh, accomplishments or that you feel most proud of? In a lot of ways, the accomplishments I feel most proud of was 
keeping that the issue of abortion in front of people to the extent that I could, despite the fact that there was a huge push among all the organizations one would think would be supporting reproductive choice to be quiet about abortion because something else was more important. I'll also mention, maybe we'll get this in, the campaign to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment was one of the most successful campaigns in modern history. Even though we have yet to ratify the amendment, the amount of social change that occurred as a result of that campaign and the creation of a movement that still is with us now 50 years later was the result of the work that everyday women like Nancy Westcott and Laura Keller and Margie Skirvin and I did um, in that in that 10 year struggle. Um, I really enjoyed working with Esther in politics. And uh, that is a long haul. I don't remember when, you know, I started getting involved a long time ago, but you know, she, we went door to door together. And when I ran for school board, she, you know, went out and knocked on doors for me. And, um, you know, we, we just really focused on a lot of um, political campaigns. And so, um, yeah, I just really, Esther had so much energy and focus and you know, sometimes you just really need other people involved who, uh, you know, who stay involved. We get so caught up, especially now with, you know, with social media and all that, but even 50 years ago with arguments as though the real issue is to win the argument. Um, or, 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 and some people, the power people, but the real point um, in an election is to elect people so that when we are debating these issues, whether it's the ERA or repeal of parental notice of abortion, that it's not like we're really gonna change people's minds. Do we have the votes in the body already? Do we have enough House members, enough Senate members to stop bad things or to make good things happen? And that's really why so many of us volunteer election after election after election to try to elect good people. It's so they'll be there to do the right thing because all of our social justice work, not all, most of it ultimately depends on getting government to give. And um, and we can't do that unless we make sure we get good people in government. The thing that's always impressed me with Esther in her work life is um, running the first U of I tenant union and now uh, being involved with the community tenant union. That That is just, fair income housing is a social justice issue and it's just always been impressive to me that her life has just been her work life and her private life have all kind of merged around social justice issues and esther has just lived this and it's it's kind of it's pretty neat inspiring i'd like to thank the mckinley foundation for this this wonderful oh i'm not holding up for this wonderful social justice award and um and for being and and i and for all of you at the foundation for being part of um the ongoing human struggle to um to lift the condition of all people and to bring about justice and peace and equality for everyone thank you so much Hello again. Uh, we're going to go ahead and draw the second raffle. Um, so we'll pull up our generator here where everybody can see the winner. So suspenseful. <laughs> Looks like Pam. Pam, you're the winner of raffle basket number two. Enjoy all the goodies. Again, um, we've listed all the um, companies in there, but we've had everything from CPBP Popcorn, Delight Flower Farm, Fired All Candle Studios, Neal Street Blues, Stango Cuisine, um, a few others. But thanks again to everybody who bought raffle tickets. Um, we are very happy to announce that we have exceeded our fundraising goal for this year, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so we are now over $5,000, which makes me very excited to announce to everybody our plans for this upcoming year. 
Um, so while we love the social justice awards, this year really got us thinking with all the hardships we've had to endure of how we can continue to open up our fundraising efforts to continue to um, help the community out. So moving forward, we will be shifting our social justice awards efforts to instead of an award program, we will be opening this up to a year round grant program. So um, instead of awards recipients, we will be um, allowing people to apply for grants throughout the year. We'll have 12 grants available um, for people that are still doing amazing things in the community. We want to make sure that our fundraising efforts are still going back into the community in really great ways. So um, we will still be having a fun event towards the end of the year week where we can honor all of the grant recipients um, and kind of see what they've done throughout the year, um, as well as mingle with everybody in fancy cocktail dresses. But please stay tuned for our award um, reimagining kind of moving forward of how we'll be doing these. Um, but we're very, very excited to have this opportunity. And that is all thanks to the donors and the sponsors. We obviously couldn't do it without you all. Um, so please continue to donate. We'll go again, put the link in the chat. Um, but all of these donations will be moving forward uh, to opening up grants for more people, more people doing amazing things in the community. So thank you so much. So <laughs> this is, we're coming to the end of our program. So you're, uh, we wanna unmute everybody. Oh, I hear some of you. Oh. Unmuted. Okay, so now let's have a round of applause for all of the award winners. Let's make some noise. Yeah. Congrats. Congrats, everyone. And oh, thanks no. for the music performances. I want to give a shout out to all the pets in the background for being well <laughs> behaved. And now I'm going to mute you all again. And we're going to hear another song um, from the McKinley Presbyterian Church Choir. And then I will come back and we will wrap up. So stay tuned for just a few more minutes. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. So I, first of all, I want to, again, congratulate all of the winners. You all are really an inspiration and makes me feel like I should have done more than tend my garden this last year. Um, I also want to thank all of my uh, fellow committee members for all the help planning this and on-site video recording. It was a bit of an adventure. And so as we close, I wanna invite you to stick around and chat. We'll leave the chat room open. Um, and so that if you wanna say hi to people or congratulate anyone, feel free. Um, so with that, have a good evening. Um, we look forward to seeing you in person sometime soon and enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs>